Thursday's talking Reds the Reds. Uh, me, Gareth Roberts, Paul Cope joining me uh, again on a Thursday. Should be a regular slot this now, shouldn't it, mate? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. Boss. Thursdays um, with Robbo and Copey. Yeah, yeah. Might change the name of the show. Yeah. Uh, but the first thing to do is to say Chelsea are out. Lol. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I really enjoyed that last night. Um, I don't like Chelsea. I can't be arsed with the fans. I can't be arsed with the club. I can't be arsed with the entitlements around them all. And I made up their out. And I made up that they played quite well. And I made up that Barcelona were absolutely brilliant for 90 minutes. And I made up they got something to cry about. Lol. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't sit on the fence, mate. And to add to that. <laughs> no, I love <laughs> like I was laughing at this. Like I've just looked at the agenda before we started filming, and that's literally what it says. Chelsea are out of lol. Yeah, that's what I, I was it. writing it, and I was trying to be serious, and I was thinking I'm a 41 year old man. Can I use the phrase <laughs> lol? Because my kids do. And then I just thought, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to use it. I'm going to show my kids. Look, your dad used lol even in writing. Um, okay. Um, well, the odds now as well, I think, are interesting. I mean, obviously, the, the, the draw for the Champions League is tomorrow. Um, I think most people, most Reds now, are saying. Well, some are saying I'll have anyone and all that, and I love all that, but, but these odds are quite telling. Man City are 3-1, to one, Barcelona 4-1, to one, Madrid 4-1, to one, Bayern Munich 9-2, to two, Liverpool 9s, Juventus 10, Sevilla 40, Roma 40. I think it's fairly obvious there, isn't it, uh, that the, the two teams you'd, you'd like to get in terms of looking to progress. Although there's an argument, I guess, that perhaps Liverpool are almost better when they're like the, the underdogs, what do you reckon? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. if you've got City, like a few people would moan because you've got an English side and they go, oh, that's not that exciting. But at the same time, you go, we beat them at Anfield. Yeah. And I, we can do it again. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd, I think at this stage, it's about two legs, isn't it? So I'm not sure I'd want City over two legs. Because no. I think between us and them, it's a bit of a toss of a coin. And all it takes is, we've seen it, all it takes is for you to get a man sent off and you could be completely yeah, out. Yeah. You could be completely destroyed now the competition. So I wouldn't, yeah, I don't want City. Um, the others, though, I'm like, I, I know I've, I've said this on the, on these before, and I've said it last year that this competition's made for us. And of all the teams that are left in it, the only one that worries me from a the type of team we don't like to play is Juve because everybody else yeah. will come and attack us and as long as someone comes and attacks us I don't care you'll get some space you think yeah. you'll get a chance well I mean look at Chelsea last night that like it is it's hilarious that they went out and it's, it's even better that they went out when people were saying and they did alright and oh but Messi's great I, I did I said this a couple of weeks ago maybe last week we can get carried away the reality is Barcelona still have Suarez and Messi up yeah, front still good. do you know what I mean still good. Th those goals that Messi scored that last one especially where he just gets it on the edge of the box and even the lads in the studio were saying yeah, when he gets it there, you're basically like they're just celebrating because he's just going to accelerate past yeah. you, and that's it. There's nothing you can do about it. And I'm watching it, thinking, which of our defenders are going to be able to deal with that? Do you know what I mean? Even like we love, we all love Van Dijk already, but at the end of the day, Messi's acceleration over just a few yards is just going to destroy anybody, isn't it? In certain moments. But even saying that, Chelsea had their opportunities and yeah. didn't take them, and some of the breaks they had. And I, I was watching that end of it, thinking. We'd put you under well more pressure than Chelsea have here. Yeah. We'll score goals and against the, you. And we're still now the uh, only English side to go to the new camp and win twice. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, there was there was other performances against, but even against Messi. I mean, do you remember when um, Rafa put out Abelow yeah. on? Yeah. And like, he wasn't in, he was he wasn't in the game hardly. And yeah. I, I think it might have been the same game as well where uh, Momo was just like smashing. Unbelievable him for yeah. ninety. Yeah. Um, so you never know. I mean. It's exciting is the, is the bottom line. I mean, I think we're all really looking forward to the draw. You could see it all explode on social media as soon as that Chelsea game finished. You know, the Champions League, uh, you wait for, I mean, we're putting up, like, graphics showing who's in the last yeah. eight and, you know, there's our name. And it, and it felt great, didn't it? It was it's like, nice, hey, it? we're back. We're, yeah. Here we are, we're back amongst the big boys. This is where we should be. This is right. And then it's even better that, you know, like Tottenham, Chelsea and, and Man United have all slipped up. Yeah, I said to Robbo before we started reporting, like, recording it, I mean, the whole, like, I hate it when you get people saying, oh, we all the English teams and you should support England. And, pff, I hate it. I it's hate a it load all. of shit. The, the only way this draw could have been better is if City got dumped yeah. out as well. It's but a I load wanna, of crap. I want to be the only English team in it. Yeah. All the way through. I don't care about anybody else. I want them to get battered. I made up that Mourinho got embarrassed. I made up that Chelsea got dumped out. Spurs, yeah, all, all, the, all the loving about Spurs and how great they are and all the rest of it. 
Who cares? That's I know. crap. I know. Not, you know not I mean? exactly, and that's the way it should be. It's supposed to be tribal. There's supposed to be rivalries, yeah. and look, we can, you know, you can appreciate other teams at times and just watch the football on the telly on a Sunday afternoon, and your bills, and go, they're all right, aren't they? But the idea that you want them to win the European Cup or do well in Europe, nah, not bothered. I'm, I, hang on, I made up. You just mentioned something again, then, because I was watching one last week, and I was like, if I was on with you, then I'd have pulled you up and asked you about this. He keeps mentioning watching telly and his bills. Have you gone to that? <laughs> I was thinking, I was sitting thinking, is your missus in bed and the kids in bed there? And you just think, I'll just get down to me bills and watch it. Or are you, or are you, get, are you getting oh, up, God, are you getting up in your bills yeah. oh. and then just watching telly? Yeah. And then people are getting up and going, Dad, get dressed, will you? Yeah, again, Which everyone, is it? it's everyone in ours calling me a scruff because like, I'm, I'm like unwashed and just sitting there Sound. in my own sweat all Sunday, you know what I mean? Watching football match after I, football match. I, I think the people have been incest as well, the fans, the Robo fans have been incest in what type of bills you've got on. Are they, are they Calvin Klein's? Are, no, they, are they briefs? Are they Marxies, boxies? What are they? Can't afford Calvin's. I mean, I did used to get them when I had a bit more dough, but now I've got two kids and, you know, all that to pay for. So Don't listen to him. I've downgraded, honestly. Like, I, I think I've got a pair of uh, Ben Sherman trunk style gears on today if you, you nice. know if you if you want to have a chat about bills uh, i don't really do ballies i don't do the slingshots you know what i mean uh, although i think they'd be quite good for exercise situations and I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued i think you're right yeah, let, let us know your thoughts on your uh, <laughs> on your underwear and what i should be wearing in the future <laughs> that's that was a I didn't expect that chat um, i mean on on the thing about sort of looking out for other english teams and uh, and being asked about them i remember 99 when obviously united won it Barmy night in Barcelona and all that, as we were reminded a million times by Clive Tilsley. I remember watching that in the Stanley and I, and, and like you know, just having a pint watching the European Cup final type thing, hoping, praying that United got beat. Yeah. Obviously, we know the way it went and all that, and we've never heard the last of it. But I, rem- I remember like there was, there was a couple in there, like an old, an older couple, and the woman came up to me. <laughs> The woman came up to me and I was with all my mates, but she picked me out and she just said, uh, I can't believe the way you are about this game. And I went, what do you mean? And she went, like, the stuff coming out of your mouth about Manchester United. And I was like, well, why can't you believe that though? And she went, you know, wouldn't you just want the English side to win? And I was like, absolutely not, no. it's the Manx. Why would they want the Manx to win? I want to be better than the Manx. I want Liverpool to have more European Cups in the trophy cabinet than them. Why would they want them to win? I don't understand your logic. And we had a bit of a debate and, uh, and then they won and then I was gutted. had loads of bevies, probably puked up in a bush somewhere. But anyway, uh, let's get back to uh, you know current proceedings. The draw to, to, for tomorrow uh, is, is tomorrow, sorry. And uh, the coincidence from, for number six continuing. Yes, um, someone, if someone's got onto that, I'm into these now. And I, I'm, I say, I've saved it all week because I know you are as well. Yeah. So, so the latest one is the defeat at Old Trafford there, which, you know, for Liverpool last weekend, which was obviously disappointing. But it's another sign that we're going to win number six because the last time, apparently, we lost 2-1 at Old Trafford to two goals from the same player and an own goal for us was, yep, 2004-5. It's another one. It's another one. We're going to do it. We're going to go to Kiev. We're not going to be chickens in Kiev. We're going to win it. Um, Love it. Okay, and... Uh, well, the, the players as well, I, I'm liking what the players are saying this week. Um, I had some random have a go at me, you know. He must watch these videos. And the minute there was a mistake from Lovren at the weekend, he sent, he sent me a message saying, you going on about video, on the video the other day saying, um, you know, why, is, why are people bothered about Lovren oh, doing, saw a, that. Do, yeah. doing an interview? Yeah, yeah. I still don't get why you're bothered about Lovren doing an interview. It's got no bearing on his play on the pitch. But anyway... Emery Chan has been doing interviews and are you bothered about that? Are you going to fume about that? Well, he's been defending Trent and I think that's quite right because, you know, obviously Trent made a mistake, high profile, goes on his Instagram and apologises, which I'm not sure is necessary. Um, and Emery's come on doing bits and he said uh, it wasn't a mistake from Trent, it was a mistake from the whole team. He says it can happen and it wasn't just Trent, it was me, it was a few other players. You don't have to criticise him for the goals or anything else, it was the team. We play as a team, we win as a team, we lose as a team. We have to learn from the game, we have to push on, go again on Saturday and we have to try and win that game. We have to try to show a reaction and get the three points. All the right things there from Emery, that isn't yeah. it? I mean, you know, Trent is a young lad. I'm sure, like, you know, 
he, he's got to mature in loads of respects and one of them will be mentally you know he will he probably has gone home there and beat himself up a little bit but he doesn't need to does he no well it, this is uh, this is all dead interesting right on a general point i i hate this whole like culture that's developing now of everyone having to come out and apologize every five minutes Shit don't, happens. don't footballers make yeah. mistakes and people lose games Shit happens. liverpool get beat at old trafford quite a lot yep. do you know what i mean you're a 19 year old kid who yeah switched off for five seconds I've written an article about this on the site this week and we, and we talked about it on the Tuesday review as well and it, even on that Lovren point I watched the game back Lovren had a good game I'm sorry like all, all, everyone watching him he missed, he missed one header against the 6 foot 3 centre forward well that's, that happens yep. do you know what I mean you, what do you want him to do you, no centre back in the world is going to win every header he go, goes up for so he actually played well you, the problem everyone's got is You'll have little moments that you focus on. And we were talking before we started again about pundits and how crap most pundits are because they all say the same thing. I didn't see any pundit saying, well, do you know what? He actually had a good game because what they focus on is he missed one header and then he went mad on Fellaini in the second half on the, on the touchline, which, yeah, do you know that was just ridiculous. But am I even that bothered about that? I'd actually rather have a player just giving Fellaini a bit of a kick. Do you know what I mean? We, there's a famous video that goes around on on Twitter now of, of when Gerard properly whacked him and like split his head open and everyone loved that so why can't we why can't we love love and go no I'm just going to kick you up in the yeah. air for a minute do you know what I mean um, and then yeah Trent do you know what I mean you don't, you don't need you don't need to apologise Emery's right there's more senior players around you who made mistakes yeah. Van Dijk I'd even include in that we talked about that on the review so, Second ball as well, isn't it? I mean, the, you know, Klopp literally said that they'd, they'd worked on the fact that Lukaku was going to win headers. Yeah. Whoever you put him up against, even Van Dijk, he's probably going to win aerial battles with you. It's about sweeping up the second ball, and he didn't do that there. And, and uh, you know, and he gets skin sense, and it, it's in the back of the net. I'd still say that first one's a, actually a cracking goal. Do you know what I mean? As much as I hate to say it, the second one less so, obviously. Something uh, I, I, we mentioned this a lot on the on the review, and if you're not listening to the review, you should be by now because it's absolutely good. boss. Um, and that's modest, isn't it? I'm on it most of the time. <laughs> um, it's the, the, the reality is we always focus when we concede goals on how how crap our defenders are. But when we score goals, we talk about how amazing our strikers are. Like that goal that Salah scored against Spurs the other week in stoppage time, where he dances through like yeah. three of them. Imagine if that was scored against us. Know. But we'd look at it and go, Salah's absolutely brilliant. Messi's goal last night literally just skipped the goalie. Past three the goalie players. gets nub- nutmeg twice. Yeah. De Gea the other night as well against Sevilla. He's crap on one of the goals, and it's like, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right in that. Like, I think when you're when you're so focused on your own club and you're watching Everton in so much detail. It's just frustration coming out a lot of the time, isn't it? And 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 we talked before about some of those almost biases in your brain against certain players as well. And as soon as you see something, you're like, right, well, that's another tick in the box that says yeah. he's shite and he's not good enough. Yeah. Um, what Emery's also been saying, which I really liked as well, he's still talking about second place. I've seen a load of people write that off. Uh, just like that's it now and it's like well why is that that it you know Chelsea and Tottenham are playing each other uh, City and Man United are playing each other there's no guarantees in any of the you know in any of the results mm. Liverpool if you won every or every game left can end up on 84 points here yeah. so you know the idea that it, it's gone it hasn't gone but I mean, and why even say that and so again you know Emre's saying it's important for second place it's important it, it was disappointing but we still have the chance to be second we do. Uh, we've got a lot of matches. Now we have to see what happens from game to game. We'll try to win ours and see where we are at the end of the season. Um, quite right again, Emre. And uh, Sadio Mane's giving it bifters as well. Um, again, bang into it. He's saying we've got the quality to beat every team in the world uh, all at once. So I don't know, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, bring them all on. And he says we'll try exactly that. He says, why should Liverpool not be on top in 2018? We want to win the Champions League, and I'm convinced we can do it for the first time since 2005. Well, I mean, Sadio. I'm, I'm made up with all that. Yeah. I'm made up with it. And, and he's, he's also talked about uh, Liverpool and, and playing under Klopp as well. He says it's very intense, permanently attacking. It's demanding for the opponents, but also for us, it's pure power. You can see the result this year. We score many, many goals. That's what Jurgen Klopp expects from us. Every player here loves Jurgen Klopp. He's always positive, passes on a lot of his power. He's a very special coach. I think he's one of the best. Every footballer would love to train under him. Again, fantastic to hear that. And if you wind it back, I mean, there's continual comparisons to the Rafa reign, I think, because it got so emotional for everyone, really. And I guess that's why it comes up so much. But if you go back to those times, you did have players in the first team or in the squad who were saying things like, 
he's cold and I'm not sure how he's managed me over this and all this sort of thing. With Klopp, like it or not, or whatever your view is on it, there's, there's, there's hardly any, it seems, dissenting voices about what he's doing. It seems that genuinely the, the group he's got are bought into him. Yeah, and something I, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago is that it, it's, I, it's very rare to hear anyone have a bad word about him, ex-players as well. Mm. Do you, if you compare him to someone like Mourinho, who, who will, he, Mourinho does have like, I always remember there was a, a Materazzi at Inter, and there was footage of him crying in Mourinho's arms like yeah. when he was leaving. That's how much he loved him. Yeah. And Mourinho was capable. I'm not, I'm not sure whether he's losing a bit of his spark, but he was capable of getting some players to run through brick walls for him. But maybe it was a 50-50 thing or a 60-40. Klopp seems to me like he's a you know, 95% like of fellas who just want to run through brick walls, even the fellas who he gets rid of. Something... I mean, I, I, I like Brendan Rodgers and, and I think he's a good coach and I think he'll do really well in his career. But something that he used to get labelled by players who... I remember Carroll saying this about him, that just lied to me. Just lied oh, to yeah, me yeah. face. Do you know what really? I mean? He'd, say, and, he'd yeah. say one thing to me and then I'd hear something else from someone, someone else and it'd be completely different and then I'd be chipped off. And, and I think what Klopp does with a lot of his players is, or with, with, that's just his general attitude, is he just tells them the truth. Whether that's, you're not good enough to be here, you're not fitting me style, or I love you and I think you're brilliant. He just tells them the truth. Yeah. And if it's, we've talked about this, Neil, Neil's said this in the past, like, it's a bit of a, well, you're my, you're my lads for this year, so you've got all year, yeah. and if, if you have a bad time, we'll get through it, don't worry about it. And I think that honesty from, he's a, at the end of the day, it's leadership, isn't it? So mm. I think that honesty from any leader, and, and an ability to admit your own flaws and all the rest of it, if it comes through. And, I mean, stuff like this from Sadio, I, I absolutely love. I, I, I think that's what's been missing from Liverpool for a long time. I've written stuff about this on the site in the past few months, that there's not enough belief a lot of the time. There's not enough of that swagger. that The old Liverpool that won and dominated, one of the things it did was... It swaggered around the place. It was my, one of my favourite ever pictures of a Liverpool player. It's that picture of Graham Souness on the beach in his ballies. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just and his whole his whole demeanour, his whole pose sitting there is just like I'm the man. I'm boss. I'm yeah. boss. I'm yeah. brilliant. So there's nothing you can do to beat me. And I just I love that attitude and this stuff from Sadio, especially from a player. When you think about it, who we've brought, we've debated all season about what is he is right, he right in, in yeah. the air? Does his confidence gone? How's his form? But this suggests this is a lad who's Joe. He believes he, he really is up for this, and I love that. Like I'd much rather have that than yeah. We're just grateful to be in the last eight, and it's progress yeah. and all the rest of it. Fuck we that, want that's to win, win it. it. Yeah, that's winning. Yeah, the lads are coming up the hill, boys. We'll be back in a minute with the papers. Okay, so we touched on it already, but all the papers are about Chelsea going out of the Champions League and uh, Barcelona wow. winning three 0 in the new camp. Um, quite like the headline today on the Mirror. Uh, Messi goes nuts uh, obviously reference to the fact that the keeper got megged twice he actually defends himself here Courtois and says um, for a goalkeeper from two metres the weakest point is between the legs even if I'm standing in a normal position there's a lot of space in between it's annoying but I don't think I have to hide sound he's just basically told the world that uh, everyone should meg him yeah, um, so, so I'm into that uh, that's fine but well, at least he hasn't apologised which I made up with yeah he hasn't apologised he's got no it's sound you try and save that yeah. um, so I'm alright with that um, Mark Hughes has got the Southampton job uh, that's dead exciting isn't it um, you know really looking forward to a new New fresh approach, <laughs> a new style of football, a man who makes friends wherever he goes, a man who's you know brilliant with the media, really opens up, tells you stuff you've never heard before. It's going to be fantastic, isn't it? What a time to be a Southampton fan. <laughs> uh, six figure bonus if he stays up. The usual merry-go-round shite of like crap managers who you know he nearly he's nearly took Stoke down, he gets sacked, and now he's got another chance already. How about do something different, boys? How about give someone else a job? How about you know a young coach coming up? How about you know people from abroad? Mark Hughes, who needs Mar more Mark Hughes in the life? <laughs> isn't isn't that mad as well? Like just I've just seen that he gets a six-figure bonus if he keeps them up. Yeah. Why? Surely that's the sole purpose that's of his, his job. job lad. Like literally, what he's being brought in for. The reason the other fella got sacked I, I, is it Pellegrino? There's yeah. so many Pellegrinos and Pellegrinis oh, and all that. Now I'd never know which one's which. But the reason he got sacked is they thought he would take them down. So when you bring someone new in and you say to them, "So your job is to keep us up, and here's your salary," why should he then get a six-figure bonus for doing what they're asking him to do? Madness. That's nonsense. And I agree with everything Robbo said. He's Madness. A, I, I don't like. 
I hate all of this. It's like the Allardyce and the Moise thing and all go banging on about oh, all, these for, all these foreign coaches are stopping young managers being given a chance. No, like, you like, are. No, it's not. It's all the old British yeah. shit coaches who keep getting relegated and getting Big sacked. load of dinosaurs who fellas, fellas in smoky boardrooms keep giving jobs to because they think it's a safe pair of hands. Fuck it off. Pardew, you shite, look at them. Go and do a dad dance and a crap disco somewhere and stop getting involved in football because you're not good enough, mate. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There is big pressure on uh, Mourinho growing now, which um, I'm fantastic with as well. Um, don't like him either. Don't like Manchester United. I think I've mentioned all these things before. But already uh, there's, there's talk of a link with PSG again. That took 24 hours, didn't it? Um, already there's talk as well that he's putting his hand out and asking for more money. Uh, you spent a shitload, mate, and you're just not up there at all with City. You're nowhere near... Uh, what they're doing football-wise at the moment. And now you're out the Champions League. Now you're giving mad quotes about, well, this is what United do. They go out of the Champions League. I've knocked them out a couple of times. That was oh, great, that, wasn't it? Like, it was like he's bragging about getting them out a third time. Amazing. Did it with Porto, did it with Madrid. Now you know he did it before, What I didn't realise, I was watching the ITV um, Champions League show last night. Not only did they say that after... He said it before as well. He said, yeah, he, he was talking to the press and he was saying, you know, United haven't gone far in the Champions League for a long time. So, so you know, their, their, their European pedigree isn't what it was and all this. And it's like, this is Hodgson esque, yeah. this. Like, why are you coming out with that? So, yeah. not surprisingly, when he's coming out with things like that, um, it, people are starting to ask this kind of question Is he right for Manchester United? Um, and. You know, the, the Mail have done like a, a bit of an investigation, if you want to call it that. They've asked a few people. Martin Keown, Redknapp, Chris Sutton, Ian Ladyman, Chris Wheeler, Ian Herbert. Ian Herbert saying categorically not the right man for the job. Uh, they've also done a nice graphic there, which is uh, music to my eyes. I know that's not right, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but basically, you know, in terms of goals scored, in terms of total shots, in terms of shots on target... Man United bottom for all of those things and the mayor are saying they're the most toothless team in the top five. They must have just three shots on target against Sevilla on Tuesday uh, but that shouldn't be in a, shouldn't have been a su surprise based on these stats. I mean I guess what is problem the problem for them now is that you know is what we talked a little bit about, about Klopp a minute ago is like you're gonna have players there now who are going doesn't know what he's doing this fella. Mm. But out the Champions League, did you see how he set us up? Did you see the tactics we played? Three shots we managed. And look, you know, you can pin some on the players and form and decision making on the pitch and all that. But he's known for doing that. I mean, even I'm, I'm still fuming about our results. I've got to be honest. And I'm fuming that it was it was pitched as a Mourinho masterclass. They clung on them. Yeah. There was loads of balls in the box. We had 13 corners. Yeah. And people will say, oh, you know, there wasn't a clear cut opportunity. The ball was pinballing around their box at times. That isn't tactical. The that's yeah. luck. Yeah, well, I, I and saw three a, penalty shots. I saw a stat last night about the, like the number of saves De Gea is making, and sooner or later, Joe, he started making a couple of mistakes in the past few weeks, and sooner or later, no matter how good you are, you'll start crumbling under that pressure. And whatever the stat was, it, it said something like, Joe, they, they concede shots like a bottom half of the table mm. side. That that's how that's how poor they are, and. I think without De Gea, he's, we might have said this the week, he's, I think he's papering over a lot of cracks for them. And even the, the number of times watching our game back, the number of times we were in a great position, even in, it was like the 94th minute, and when Alden had the ball on the edge of the box and all he had to do was play Firmino in and we had a, an opportunity. And he just overhit the pass by five, Joe, by, by, by a yard or two. And that had nothing to do with Mourinho being good or no. defending well or anything else. And you only, had, you only had to look at their fans in the crowd. Their fans in the crowd weren't thinking, well, we're controlling this game without the ball. There's no need to worry about this. This this will be fine. They're all there. They're we're getting us, we had the corner in the last minute. Yeah. They're thinking, this is it. They're going to score. So I, there's a, I think there's a potential argument here. And I do, I do think he looks like he's lost a bit of his spark. And when I think when a leader in any industry starts to get to that point where they look a little little bit jaded and their, their message is becoming a bit worn out, he could be the, just the most high profile of the dinosaurs that we're talking about, you know, the, the Hodgson's and the Allardyce's and Pulis and Hughes, because football's changing and the likes of uh, Guardiola and Klopp are riding that crest. And I think for football, the same as fans, if you're phoning your mates or you're going away to your national teams and they're playing under Guardiola and Klopp and you're and they you're playing for Mourinho and you're saying, What's it like playing for them? And they're saying it's brilliant, you know, like we we have a laugh, it's fun, it's passionate, they just want to play footy and score loads of goals and entertain. And you're going back to training with Mourinho going, What are we I'm doing again? Right. Another defensive drill. 
I mean, I wonder how, I wonder how Alexi Sanchez feels about it all because, you know, basically he's arrived at Manchester United and then they're doing a great impression of being Arsenal. Uh, so, yeah, I'm sure he's not too happy about that. Should have went to City, mate. Good then. Um, one last thing before we go. Uh, if you're thinking of listening or you see any advertisement for and think, what's that? I might go and have a go. You're thinking of listening to a new radio station called Love Sport, which is due to start on Monday. Give it the biggest fucking swerve you've ever given anything in your life because it's run by that twat Kelvin McKenzie, the former editor of The Scum, the lying bastard. Um, sue me, Kelvin. Um, he's taken out an advert uh, at Fulham QPR as well, advertising this latest load of shite. Um, and it, the advertising hoarder will say that this new station is more gobby than Carragher. Hilarious, you prick. Um, so he's an absolute bell end him, and now anyone can take a man seriously who put a lie on the front page of a national newspaper, then laughed it off for years. Well, I don't know really, but here he is, still fucking around in the in, in the in the media industry in this country. Quite how anyone entertains him, I don't know. Probably says more about the people who do than the people who don't. Anyway, rant over. Give that a fucking swerve. Uh, on the Anfield wrap today, uh, the fantasy football show is out there. Uh, and the Friday show will be out there as well. That is one of our best shows. Uh, it's good every week. Mr Neil Atkinson puts in a lot of work into that show in, in getting you a, a magazine show all about the football this weekend, not just the Reds, but you know what's happening at the top, the bottom. You get some great contributors too. Give that one a go. Uh, it's one of the favourite ones on uh, Tour Player. £5 a month. Theanfieldapp.com forward slash subscribe if you haven't, haven't had a go yet. Um, I think I've covered, I've covered everything there, haven't I? Uh, okay, that's been Talking Reds. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow.